And a lot of those songs, you know, were a way of communication, were a way of bonding, especially if you were someone who knew how to read or write, right? Communication through music was very important. So music was good, was important on a spiritual basis, but communication and for, for cultural and culture in, in general, right? Absolutely. Uh, now, um, this congregation here was a very healthy congregation for many years. It was a, uh, the largest it ever got was about 75 members, so they definitely used to build this church, I would say. Now, something that happens in the early uh, 20th century affects the congregation here, and I think the black population in Canada in general, which is, as many as half of the people who came over to Canada on the Underground Railroad decide to go back. Now, that happens once slavery is abolished in the States, and it happens because Traveling along the Underground Railroad, it was very common for families to get separated, right? If you're escaping, you're often traveling in the middle of the night. And back then, if you don't know how to read or write, it's very hard to communicate and send letters or figure out where someone has gone. So even if you came to this country and settled down and established your life here and were happy and safe, once you thought it was safe to go back there, you might to be reunited with whoever you have lost, right? So I think that is one of the reasons that the, the congregation here shrinks and why the black population here shrinks as well, but you know, there's a number of reasons people move away and pass away here. Regardless, by the 1950s, there were only about five people in the congregation of this church who were coming on a regular basis. So they really wow. did not maintain the congregation here. Luckily for us, among those five at the time, there was a couple uh, who lived in that white house right next door to the museum. Their names were Melvin and Betty Simpson. Uh, Melvin also went by Mac. You might see a, see a bust of him in our main gallery. They are the founders of this museum. Uh, they were, like I said, members of this congregation, so they had a personal connection to the building. But uh, both of them being black members of this community, they also knew that a lot of history had come through here, and they wanted to you know, save that history and tell people about it. So it was their idea to open up the museum. The first step was to buy this church, which is what they did in the late 60s. They bought this church turned into the first museum building. Uh, in, in 1982, they built our main gallery over there, so that's when the main museum opened. Uh, Mr. Melvin Simpson did pass away shortly after that, but he did get to see the museum open, which was nice. Uh, the last service that was held in this church was held in 1988, so we haven't held the services here since then. Now, unfortunately, between 1988 and 1999, the church really fell apart. It wasn't being maintained, I don't think there was enough money in the budget. So again, the roof was a major issue, but because there was so much damage to the roof, the floor then became an issue as well, right? And over 10 years, the walls also really were crumbling and not able to stand up on their own. And they still leaned at quite an odd angle, you can see from when the wall was in poor shape. So by 1999, because of all these structural issues, the church was going to be torn down. Luckily, that's when the government of Canada recognized this building as a national historic site, so it was saved from demolition. And then we had to raise something between one and two million dollars to have significant work done on the church. So the church was closed for about a year, and obviously the biggest change was the flooring, right? So this is newer flooring here that was done in the 1990s, but all of this on this side is original from when the church was first built. So it's 175 years old. They also strengthened the roof and the walls, and then opened the church back up after about a year. And like I said, we don't have services in here anymore, but we use it for events, and we have speakers in here, we do a few speeches. And we also have rented it out for weddings and things like that in the past. Uh, one other spot I always like to point out is this uh, portion of the wall over here. Now we've kept a little bit of the wall exposed underneath all the plaster, so you can see what the original uh, build looked like. And this shows off a really interesting technique they used in building back then, which was the use of horsehair, which you can see in the plaster there, as a kind of binding material to make sure everything was stuck together. We know they used horsehair for a lot of different things back then, to stuff cushions and absolutely, absolutely. So this is also one thing they used it for. So you're more than welcome to explore the building, and uh, whenever you're ready, we can make our way back to the main gallery.